Pierre Ramli, I think whether he consciously is aware or not, he is. He knows what makes a song work, and what basically makes a song work is that it's hummable, because the human mind is, is sort of programmed since young with nursery rhymes, and nursery rhymes not very long, and 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 also, in uh, local culture like Malay culture, we don't have. Classical pieces that stretch for half an hour or fifteen minutes pieces, so the 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 local are used to nursery rhyme folk song like rasa sayang and all that, and they are quite short so songs, and and they're quite memorable because they're hummable. So if a song is hummable, then you know if you, it it will become popular, and I think also partly, Piramli had. Uh, Knew what would work with uh, the everyday people. So subject matter is quite. I mean, it's, some of the topics are quite silly, but they are something that people can relate to. They are quite, not silly, but nonsensical in that sense, absurd. You know, we uh, like lagu uh, po 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 bujang la po ada Manchester ada roko. Yeah, and 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 guys would know that. You know, like. Yes, yes. It, you know, it's it's a it's a very basic um, way of communicating. So, I think he is kind of um, in tune, and I think also because he is an everyday man, he doesn't you know, in spite of his stardom, I think he was very much hanging out with the real people and you know, uh, everyday kind of guy. So I think I think partly his his able ability to communicate at the basic level with the masses. I mean, it's not that he couldn't do some complicated jazz music, but it wouldn't be sell. It wouldn't make you know. It. I think what Piramli is, he's not an elitist. He does not try to be. Oh, I'm this special guy, and I'm gonna make some complicated music that people understand. But only my me and my three friends understand. You know. So, I think in that sense, he is uh, like a local folk hero, lah. In a sense, you know. Yeah. Manchichim, <laughs> Bujang lapo keliling kampung naik basi kahai pakai sarung minum air dan naik gembung sakit perut tepek telolong hai bujang lapo tak boleh harap basi kaljabo dan naik kurap baru putus hai urat saram masuk angin nak keluar. Jangan lupa lo ya burung sana sini hai bikin sebo naik basikal semacam bro tak ada kerja tola habo oh mencici 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 Hi, Buja.
In order to study Piramli's work, you have to study the man before he became famous. Like, what was his ground grounding to when he was in Penang? What was his life like? Where did he learn music? What kind of music was he listening to? So I think I think in Penang there was Borea, there was and Borea is a lot more influenced by Portuguese and Latin music. So I guess he's he's comfortable with that. And then also, uh, I think he also listened to a lot of stuff during the war because he was working with the Japanese. Uh, he was. I think he was working with uh, one of the logistical units, you know, uh, or rather he was forced to, and and that gave him access to uh, music and also films. So so his his influence not just they are not just um, uh, okay his his the stuff that he picked up when he was a young musician, Borea and Bangsawan. And obviously, at that time, growing up, there were a lot of more traditional music going on. So the kampung, you know, during weddings and stuff. And then on top of that, he also had access to uh, Japanese works because he was, you know, during the war, he was working with them, you know. So, so I think those things, you put them all up, and then you, and then he, with the experience of moving to Singapore and then mixing around with, with other musicians or songwriters. Uh, I think he 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 grew more. Um, also, I think uh, like Michael Jackson, uh, Piramli is a sponge. Basically, he absorbs influences, <laughs> translate them through his system, and comes out something else. So you can hear like for example, "Aci Aci Buka Pintu" is from a Maulud song. Na, 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 so you know it's is that you know so he he kind of whether he did consciously or not whether he was trying to or oh, let's try and introduce Maulud music to the message I don't think he was that kind of guy he's not preachy Piramli wasn't a preachy guy he was like he whatever that comes naturally to him he'll do it you know and whatever works whatever that 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 can entertain people I think nothing that was he's, he's, he's actually Charlie Chaplin. You know, in that sense, his, his, you know, his, um, his ability to 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 make entertaining films. You know, because I think he he knows where's at, la, Basically, you know, it's like it's like Fandiyama, the footballer. You know, he knows exactly when a goal is when a goal is coming. You know, you that that comes as a gift. You there's no science to it. You cannot explain it in scientific or mathematical methods. It's basically something that is just is there. It's instinctive. You know. So, and then plus, given the fact that he had access to all the studio and the musicians, and you, you know the money wasn't his, so he was just like gone, you know. And plus, on top of that, he he knew that his friends needed to work, you know, so he gave them a lot of work in that sense. I think his arrangements were also, I mean, he had a lot of help from people like Yusuf B, and lyrically, I think he had some stuff uh, done by Sudah Sud Marji, Jamil Sulong. So he he was not afraid to share. And that's where he excelled because if he's trying to do everything himself, then it's just whatever limited scope he's got, you know. So, with all these guys coming in and him, you know, sharing it and giving them that space to work, then he actually added on. There's an add-on factor. So I think that's clever of him, and you know, not very being very selfish. Um, apart from that, I think he was also aware like what are people listening? What's the popular music at that time? I mean, if he was to be alive now and at at that age, then living now he'll probably do a lot of pop stuff you know maybe indie or rap or something you know so but at that time those music were the pop music of that era you know so he was working with that within that medium he was not a elitist or trying to be special he was just like look and i don't think he understand that concept anyway old school artists they don't you know that's more like a 
later postmodern Western concept of being a cult underground or nobody, you know. But I think he and also you remember he he had bosses to please. Because and these people are counting the dollars and cents. Look, you spend X amount and then the ticket sales are not that great because your movie is too complicated. Make it simple, make it clever, make it funny, you know. And that's that's like the formula he was working with. I think. I think they've they've tried recently. Uh, it's called indie interpretation of Iramli's works. Uh, some of it are good. Some of it just fell flat. But again, that's 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 art. That's music. You you can make mistakes. It's, there's no right or wrong. You know, it's, it's you know what's good for a guy I may mean, be horrible to another person. So, but it's it's good to to allow that to happen because I think it was uh, initiative by I think they did it Istana Budaya. So, but yeah, there was some kind of initiative to actually in reinterpret Iramli's works. You know, in that sense. So, I think. What's important is to actually understand the spirit of Piramli. Because what he did is because of his time. He had the access to those instruments. He didn't have computers, he didn't have drum machines, he didn't have... I think electric guitar was only later on that they added on. So he used whatever he had at that time to, to make his music, you know. So I think what is what we need to learn from Piramli is yeah I mean obviously with his works and you know the examples of his, his work but but his ethics of working his principle of working his philosophy and the spirit of Piramli that drives him to create such a great body of work within a short period of time you know I think that is important to learn because you cannot be the next Piramli because you can't. You cannot be the next M. Nasir because you can't. You can't be the next Rami Sari, you can't. Because you have to be who you are supposed to be or your, your true self in that sense, you know? Or else, because I don't think Piramli was trying to be anybody else at that time. He had influences. I mean, you can see there's a bit of uh, Nat King Cole because of the jazz influence. I suspect his singing style of is So it was, it was an Elvis thing. Like how rock singers are influenced by Western rock singing style of the high pitch and the screeching voices. Piramli was also influenced by that because, you know, he had access to all that, uh, what was going on at that time, you know, 50s, 60s were, were, were Elvis, uh, 50s, yeah, it was an Elvis time. So he, he, he had that connection. And because of, again, there was army bases, Singapore being very cosmopolitan, so all these records were coming in, music stuff, and you know, so they all had um, quick access to to what's going on. I mean, whatever that came out a month ago in America, probably received within a month in through shipping lines to to Singapore. So, so Piramli is clever in the sense that he takes bits and pieces, but he makes it into his own thing, and it becomes his his work. But if you strip it down, yeah, it is Piramli because the melody. Um, the, the 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 style of writing is is piramli, but the embellishment you know you have of rumba or jazz or it's, it's it's whatever that's hip at that time you know well he's quite a chameleon actually he he uh, uh, he, he he whatever that you know like for example uh gitaranjiwa uh, that's jazz so he kind of like what well, well, the the scene requires that kind of music, so he writes it. So, in a sense, Piramli he works within the film format as well. Like, so I guess it's it's gonna be quite interesting to to get into Piramli's mind because it's like okay, he he's you know he you know you know how he works. From what I heard from Jack Yusno, who's used to hang around him quite quite a lot, he comes home from work and all that. He will wear his apit white t shirt and uh, sarong, with cigarette and coffee and typewriter. So just be working. So in his head is all these things going on. So you know. So he had different things like you know. It's like in the computer you have several windows open. So he was working like that. Yeah, you know. So okay, here's a scene. Oh, I need a song. Okay, the song would require this kind of mood. And he will talk to those guys. Oh, I need this kind of mood. So you know. So I think that's how he works. He he you know he had. He had this so different windows open at the time because he's he's the one he given the authority to to write, and direct. So he, you know, basically you are controlling the whole thing. So you know, you, uh, you, you at liberty to do, you know, interesting things. You know, so I think that's that's uh, the strength of Piramli in a sense, like, You know, remember a few some years back, maybe ten years ago, Sheila Majid came out with Legenda. 
and which is a reinterpretation of Pirami's work. Brilliantly done, you know, given the full respect that it deserves and, you know, quite meticulously produced by Rosanazis, you know, that. So, but even in spite of that, a lot of people said, oh, why are they trying to do Nalagalogu Piramli? You know, like, why they are butchering it and stuff like that. I mean, again, these are coming up from older school, mainly artists from old, older generation, Jalan Ampas, which they don't understand the concept of reinterpretation of his works, you know, because that's been done by Western artists, again, like Nat King Cole's works and stuff like that. Again. So, uh, I think Sheila, Sheila Majid's album is a good example of how you have to treat certain things respectfully. Because obviously certain things are done with, uh, there's, there's limitation to it. Like, you know, when you do um, Getaran Jiwa, you cannot turn it into a punk rock song because you, because you have to understand um, what is the essence of Malay music. The essence of Malay music is in, in the melody and the, f the feel of the song. So, and whereas punk is attitude. Punk is not about music. Punk is all about anger and attitude and expression of that through music. So if you m m combine that, it's it's quite schizophrenic because it's just, it's mad, you know? So, and in that sense, it, of course you can do it, you know? It will sound interesting to, you know, the band and three of his cousins, you know? But uh, apart from that, uh, it might lose a certain... Uh, flavor, but then again, what is the concept of the album or the band? If they're saying, "Oh, well, let's do a punk interpretation of Pinamli's work," then obviously, yeah, go on and do it because then you just showing that, yeah, we can do wonders with his melodies. You know, it's unfortunate that in his lifetime, you know, uh, he had he he had setbacks and. But what I thought was when I watched the History Channel, I think he suffered from a burnout. Because you know. It, a filmmaker makes in Hollywood one film in two years but he makes four films in one year and so it was a burst of ideas and creativity and man being man after a certain age you do have a limitation you know like and he was at his most creative when he was in between his 25 and 40 in fact no when he died 44 44 so the last 10 years he, he for 10 years he was in Malaysia again yeah? So that means he went off, he went back to Malaysia when he was 34. Mm -hmm. So his peak period was in actually 20s to early 30s. That's when he did a lot of his great films. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point he suffered a burnout. And then on top of that, I think uh, lack of resources mm -hmm. and also uh, the whole setup he had when he was in Singapore, the, the, uh, the cameraman, the crew, the, you know, the technical aspect of things. I think those guys remain in Singapore and continue working in Singapore. So he didn't have that facility to help him out and then plus on top of that he had um, uh, the, the financial backing wasn't strong you know we, he used to be free with his uh, work because he had uh, Shaw Brothers saying whatever you want take it you know Mr. Quack said mau apa ambil just do so so he had all that facilities though he had all the uh, access to all that stuff so when he went up to KL he didn't have that and then plus on top of that I think he's, he's, he's burnt out huh? yeah, burnt out and and his mistake was he was trying to be to match himself with what's going on that's why they kind of boo when he did the university tour master to jeffrey dean it was pop yeah yeah era and you know his music was kind of on the way out in the sense like it was not the, the hip thing anymore so when he tried to do a pop yeah, yeah i think he did like macam bunyi guitar and all that it didn't really translate very well with the younger audience and, and the fact that also he's grown older the, the audience were young so, I think the the fault was that he was trying to retain the old glory without realizing that he's actually moved on with age and the audience are, are young and they don't really know of him because by the time he went up to what, 60, between 65 and 73, it was a, you know, it was a pop year era and, and his best works were in the 50s, you know. To say that Piramli didn't get any help, he actually made 18 films that last 10 years of his life. You know, so he, so basically, he did have access to making films, but the films were not as great as as it was during Jalan Ampas. I mean, there was I think I like Doctor Rushdi and a few other films, you know. But his, for me, the Doraemi thing was a bit kind of 
a bit out lah because the outfit was too tight and they were all growing in size and you know things things like that things that were not working for him, but he was trying to retain because maybe no one was telling him look, your time has moved you have to do something else maybe you're just a director or you're just a producer don't act in films uh, you know you you have to uh, know where you are you know in that sense so so in in in, in the aspect uh, uh his weakness was that he was trying to recapture his old glory when it was in singapore but the mechanism in kl was wasn't the same i mean obviously there were backstabbing and, and you know but that's that's normal in any industry you know whether you work in a law firm or you work in a hospital or in the film industry there will be always be conflicts with person personnel or with p- different people you know but the fact that f- for the last 10 of his life he made 18 films and they were not as good as the one that he did in Jalan Pas said could indicate something that he actually had a burn up that he actually w- you know his creative juices were all spent at making four films in a year is not easy writing the script directing making the music uh, i'll go mad just doing doing like you know some, something like that you know so but i think he he was driven like any genius would be they are just driven by work so in that aspect maybe his personal life had suffered a bit you know people people around him feel neglected he he, he didn't care much about his uh, personal well-being his finances one example is when uh there was a strike uh, in Jalan Ampas and he needed to finish the film he used his own money to finish the, f- the, the to pay the rest of the crew for overtime so which means he is he's obsessed with his work and like any any geniuses are they they are obsessed they're like mad scientists they're just in the lab they're just working 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 trying to get this this vision of perfection in their head so i think that's what piramli went through you know So when when he didn't have that kind of similar uh, uh, set up in Malaysia, that's when he his work uh, start to dwindle.